Hello everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to take a look at a tool that I've been developing and am actually releasing today. Um, many of you have probably seen this in my videos and a lot of screenshots on my Twitter. Um, and that tool is called Crypto Tester. A link to it will be in the description for download. And this is just a tool suite that I've been developing kind of in my journey of learning cryptography and just generating a couple little tools for messing around with crypto and analyzing ransomware. Uh, so if we open it up, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Encrypt Decrypt tab. You'll see we have many options for generating a key. Uh, we can just give it text. Uh, we can give it hexadecimal, uh, XML, PEM. These are for RSA keys. We can also give it a crypto blob or just base 64 that decodes to key to hexadecimal. Um, so uh, there's also several algorithms over here. We have you know basic XOR and AND, ROT13, AES, some stream ciphers with RC. We have T, Blowfish, Des, just a couple different uh, algorithms here. And we'll see also uh, some of them will support a block mode if it's a block cipher. Also padding, uh, you can put in a custom IV. Uh, the IV will just default to uh, zero bytes of the length of the required block size um, by default. Um, so we can, for example, drag in a file here and we can just, uh, if we try to encrypt this, for example, it does a check and, and it'll see that the key is not valid size. Uh, you can't use AES with just four bytes. So we can actually also hash. Uh, so for example, we could use an MD5 hash and there's our encrypted bytes. Uh, we could also use uh, SHA-256 to make it 32 bytes and we can encrypt that. And of course there's decrypt, which this isn't valid, but um, if we were, uh, as you might have seen in some of my videos, just testing real quick if I need to uh, you know, see what algorithm it is to confirm. Um, there's also support for our, uh, some RFC 2898 deriving. Um, the way that that works is uh, it uses the, the, the actual function crypt derive. Um, and this is common in a lot of .NET ransomware. Um, so it takes this, uh, this key, hashes it several times over. Actually, I'd, that would be a double hash. Um, you can give it specified salt. And that will automatically generate the IV that's used because um, that's how a lot of ransomware use it. Um, we can also mess with the, uh, the offset of how many bytes we're encrypting, where we're encrypting in the file, whether that's hex or decimal. Um, get some general stuff on the file size. Also, another feature for kind of messing around with is uh, we can just generate a bunch of zero bytes. Um, so, for example, I could do 200 and 48 or 2048 and it just generates a bunch of zero bytes that we can start encrypting and we can kind of then we can kind of play around with some parameters here uh, we could try you know hashing it here doing it without padding uh, we could change the block cipher we can, uh, we can change oops do ecb you can see how ecb repeats uh, do CTR mode, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, also with this, uh, we can actually import a key. So for example, um, I mentioned that it will import a crypto API key. If I drag that into here, it automatically is detected as uh, AES. Uh, I, could, I could throw in an RC4 key, automatically detects that. We could throw in a private RSA key, it detects that, and also shows you it's RSA uh, 1024. Uh, we could import it as an XML. This one is 2048. These are public keys. And so that's pretty handy for uh, just some quick testing. So um, another feature of this tool is the compare tab. Um, so I'll go ahead and drag in an original chrysanthemum and we can kind of compare it with some other some ransomware encrypted ones. So for example, I'll throw this one over here and we'll see that it analyzes it real quick. It sees that the file name, it actually recognizes that it's a hex encoding of the original file name. Um, so that comes in handy with uh, testing that out. 
uh, we could throw one of these over here and it'll see the file size is actually saved in the file so it calculates the original file size over here um, turns it into bytes and then searches for that because some ransomware do save the original file size in hexadecimal also a couple of other formats that we'll see it'll detect uh, we can throw this one in here and it detects that there's some ascii at the bottom uh, we can take a look at that in the hex editor to actually look at that uh, let's see what this one this one detects base 64 and if we take a look down here this 3d is a uh, equal sign um, so it detected that there's some base 64 in here so that's interesting uh, let's see what other ones we have we have here this one detected that there's an AES-256 uh, crypto blob and we can actually see that uh, the 0102A4 so this is uh, I just know from memory and from a previous video this is an AES key encrypted with RSA uh, we can take a look at here and it finds that there's a uh, the ASCII AES at the beginning this one is like a uh, different format for a certain library uh, we can take a look at this one it found uh, Hermes at the bottom uh, this one found some more base 64 but also found the file size somewhere else in the file in decimal form uh, let's see what the fuck you does <laughs> let's see so it it also found the once again here we can see this is uh, this is ASCII characters um, it found this ASCII and found that that's the file size uh, this one has an RC4 key so we'll see that's a simple blob uh, encrypted with RSA and then this must be the RC4 number and let's take a look at this other one this one also found some ASCII at the end of the file so I find this uh, pretty useful for seeing what type of changes there are you also see it says the file name was appended um, it'll detect if like I showed if it's just hexadecimal encoded also shows the entropy of the new data versus the old one uh, how many bytes were added so just some interesting preliminary analysis of uh, the differences between the files before and after encryption a um, couple of other tools I'll highlight here uh, we can also do a visual difference if it doesn't crash this time this is one of my beta features and we'll see the entire file is basically encrypted if we extend that out we can see there's a I can see it there's some green dots that show we'll see in the bottom left there it shows the comparison uh, looks like those two hex are equal but those don't it can kind of get a little buggy with large files but if it's a small file it's kind of interesting we can see an actual view of byte by byte comparison um, we can also get an XOR stream from this so these two files will get XORed together and generate this stream um, just one megabyte for optimization um, or we can AND it uh, let's see we can also um, another pretty big highlight that I know a lot of people are interested in is the blob analyzer and this uh, will actually analyze crypto blobs from the Microsoft API so if we for example some of these I can import a binary let's go ahead and import that AES key we can analyze that to plain text here's the actual AES key since it's not encrypted it tells you it's AES 256 uh, we can import this RC 4 key we'll see it's encrypted by RSA uh, 128 encrypted bytes if you multiply that by 8 that tells you the key bit or the key length of the RSA key um, we can also import PEM files so it imports it it actually converts it to a blob uh, so that it can analyze it internally and then we can see it's a RSA 4096 key we can import XML and it converts it to blob and then we can also export it as a different format so we can export it as a binary which will be this crypto blob we can export it as PEM export it as XML um, so that's pretty interesting and then I showed in a previous video if we have an encrypted blob uh, let's see that RC41 was encrypted we'll get an option to decrypt the blob now I don't have the private key for this key but if I did I could put it in here and it'll decrypt it to a simple blob or to a plain text blob and then we could export that and just different different tools for playing around with crypto blobs 
So I know um, I actually developed this because I couldn't find a tool that did this, interestingly enough. Um, so I made one. Um, another tool I want to highlight here is an RNG tester. Um, this is for playing with some random number generators. So put in the seed of zero, we can see uh, just uh, we have this the length of 10. We can generate 10 random numbers using the .NET random uh, class, which uses, uh, I put in parentheses what algorithm it is. Uh, MT is a Mersenne twister. Uh, we could do decimal or hex for the seed. Um, let's do like 100 bytes. Uh, we can output it as hexadecimal, or we can uh, make a character set to choose from. And I have some presets for, for alphas. I have the vanilla hidden tier character set. Um, so this is fun to just kind of check some uh, random you know, generator output, um, compare if I need to uh, write it in a different language or something. Um, I also have a couple of other ones that I'm still implementing, uh, such as the PHP Mersenne Twister. There's actually some tweaks between PHP 7.1 and 7.2. They fixed it. Um, we have the PowerShell random algorithm, which is a little different than the .NET when it comes to especially PowerShell 5. We'll see those numbers are way different. Uh, we also have the C++ RAND, which is an LCG, or linear congruent generator I believe um, also we have Delphi's random and there's a couple of other ones I haven't implemented yet um, but and then uh, finally just to uh, make sure that I've implemented all these uh, algorithms correctly because some of these are not available in libraries so I've had to copy paste some, someone else's code um, I have some unit tests in here uh, for some of the main algorithms and we'll see there there's two of them that have a have a current bug and these are these are um, tests that I've pulled from like standards um, like the NIST standard and I believe there's a Nessie standard uh, some some big names that I've pulled their test vectors and we'll see the bug yeah FIPS publication yeah there's a bug with the the des specifically in CFB mode I haven't been able to debug what that is but you'll see the first byte is correct but everything else is not uh, but everything else is just a way to make sure that uh, you can I guess trust the the encrypt and decryption of it in this tool so there's also just a little quick conversion for D word to to a integer so if we have like a, because because of the endianness, it can make it a little confusing sometimes. So I don't know. I think uh, that should be a number. Yep. So that would convert to that in decimal. And same thing for 64-bit. So that has been a highlight of uh, Crypto Tester. Once again, the link to it will be in the description. And if you guys have any any questions on the program or uh, any feature requests or especially any bugs or anything, uh, definitely let me know. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.